Hello everyone, I'm Rick Dior and this is part four of my music theory series for drummers and percussionists. Today we're going to start covering scales. This is a huge topic, so it's probably going to take two or three videos. But today we're just going to deal with key signatures and major and minor scales. So we did chords in the last video, voicings. Before that we did triads and seventh chords. And before that we did the notes and intervals. This is the way I teach this in that order. So I teach the notes, the intervals, then I teach chords, which I consider the outline of these uh, scales. It's really important to look at those other videos first, in my opinion, so you have a grasp of what we're going to do, because we're basically going to, you know, fill in the, uh, the drawing here with color, which I consider scales. So those chords were outlines of what's going to come now. The first thing we need to talk about are key signatures. So key signatures are something we use in Western music to organize the sound of our music. So in other words, we have 12 key signatures and they range from C to B all the way up. And again, if you watch those uh, earlier videos, especially the first ones, when we talk about the notes, we talk about all of that. So you're going to have uh, keys in sharps and flats. Some of them are enharmonic. In other words, they're the same thing. So a C sharp major scale is the same notes as D flat, although it's written differently. So it's important to understand that. So since a C sharp, which is here, it's a half step above, above C and it's a half step below D, so that makes it D flat. So that's the same scale, but it's written differently because of the way that our uh, Western music dictation and, no and notation system works. So it's important to understand that. Now there's lots and lots of ways to figure out key signatures. I used to teach music theory uh, at a couple colleges years and years ago. And when I first started teaching, I taught by the book. In other words, the way I was taught uh, where I went to school, Manhattan School of Music, we had a great theory program there. We had to do four years of theory. Uh, and, you know, by the time you got out of there, you knew a lot of stuff. So, but as I started teaching it, I kind of, you know, felt like I was losing some of the students. So I devised over several years a different way of teaching key signatures and scales. And I had much better success with that. So that's what, what I'm going to show you today. Although there's many, many different ways to teach this. There's no one correct way, as long as what you're teaching is correct. In other words, the facts need to be there. So I divide uh, key signatures up into two things, okay? Sharp keys and flat keys. And a lot of people use the circle of fifths to figure this out. And I'll put that here on the screen. And you, gotta, you have to kind of memorize that to figure that out. Memorization is really important for keys and scales and all that uh, because you're not going to be sitting and reading them. So over time, you're going to need to memorize, you know, almost 100 scales at least. So let's get started and I'll show you how I normally teach this. So we'll start with the sharp scales. Now, one thing to remember is that C a major and A minor, which are relative, have no sharps or flats. So if you remember C major, okay, that's that scale. And we went over that in the first uh, video. The relative minor, if you go down to minor third, is A minor. It's the same exact thing. So those two scales in their natural form, especially the minor, have no sharps or flats. So that's where you want to start. On the vibraphone and other mallet instruments, it's actually the hardest scale to play because there's no landmarks. In other words, you have no accidentals. So when you try to play that fast, say you can miss notes. I'll play correctly now. So a big problem I have with students is when they're going down, they'll play in between the notes like I demonstrated the first time there. 
okay? So you need to take all these scales really slow, no faster than this. So that's how you want to do them. And put your metronome on. I like my students to start at quarter note equals 80 or slower, no faster, and that would be the 16th note. So if we have the quarter note, bup, 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 bup. And you know, you'll start, when you're learning them, obviously you'll start doing them much slower, maybe 50 or 40 if you have to. So remembering that that C major has no sharps or flats, we're going to start there. And then I like to go up diatonically first, okay? So diatonically means just no uh, sharps or flats, just going up for C, in other words, going up the scale. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and doing those scales. So the next scale would be D major. Now, before we go on, I'm going to show you a little trick for learning how many sharps and what sharps are in the sharp keys, all right? So there's some sayings you can use uh, to remember these. Uh, so if you think about the order of sharp scales based on the circle of fifths, which we'll put on the screen here again for you to look at, they're gonna be uh, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, C sharp. So you can think of lots of sayings. I have my own, which uh, I might not need to share this. <laughs> this is a family video. But uh, a good one is like, good dogs uh, are eating breakfast for cash. <laughs> so that's G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, C sharp. That's the order as those sharp keys occur. And then if you put uh, under it, if you write under it, as you'll see here on the screen, the order of the sharps as they occur, so F, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, B sharp, you can line those up. And you can think of a, say, a saying for that, um, you know, uh, four cows got drunk at Ethel's bar or something like that, whatever you want to figure out for that. But once you write those down, you can line them up. So in other words, G, which is our first sharp key, would have one sharp, F sharp. All right, so that's the first one after C that we would do. So we're going from C to G, that's a fifth. And there's our circle of fifths. So here's how G major sounds. Okay, so there's one sharp F. Now, if you go up a fifth from G, you have D. D has two sharps, and those sharps are F and C. So if we start on D, the other way to check yourself is you know what that major scale sounds like. If you do D and it sounds like this, You know that doesn't sound like this. So, you know, major, some people equate that with happiness. Uh, I don't, but some people do. So that sound, you should know when you're not playing it right. Part of doing all this theory stuff is to get the sound in your head so you actually can hear, because that's what music's about anyway. So as well as seeing it written, you need to hear everything really well. So you'll know if you're playing it wrong. So you'll proceed from G, D, A major, E major, B major, and then F sharp major and C sharp major. And then you'll match all those uh, sharps up to that. Then we come to the flat keys. And in order, those are F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat. So you could say, um, I guess, four bats eat at Danny's garbage can. <laughs> That's a good one. And then the order of flats as they occur is B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, F flat. So one that I've heard a lot is big elephants always uh, do great circus feats or something like that. Or you could just think of bead GCF. There's lots of ways. But again, you line those up 
and then you start working on those. So the first one is F major. Now F major uses flats, not sharps, okay, as we just talked about. So that's F major, one flat. Now the next one is B flat, all right? And that has two flats. It's gonna be B flat and E flat. So you'll start on the B flat. And that's our B flat major scale. So the next scale we'll do is E flat. B flat, E flat, and A flat. So that sounds like this. And the next one after that is A flat, and that has four flats, B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. And that sounds like this. And onward. So you need to learn all these scales. Now, just like I told you in that uh, second video, the chord video, it's really good to use flashcards for these. So I would... When I was younger, I would write the names of these scales on flashcards, and then I would just pull one out of the pile, be it major, minor, harmonic minor, melodic minor, we'll get to all that, uh, and then just do the scale. And I, that's how I practiced them. So I had them memorized, okay? The other thing you might want to do as you're doing the scale is the arpeggio, which is the chords, which we already went over in that second video. So as you do, uh, we just did A flat, then you'll do the arpeggio. So that's A flat major, and then you do the scale, or vice versa. So there's several ways to practice scales. Obviously, you can just do them two octaves, like I just showed you, which is the first way you want to do them. And you can also do them one octave. Now, if you do them one octave, I suggest going up one note above and then coming down so you can stay in common time. So that would sound like this. So I moved chromatically there from C, and then I went all the way up to D, came back, and the last note I came back on was a C sharp, and then I played that scale, and then the next one would be D. So that's how I do that. So I'm running the scales chromatically. So after you learn them with the circle of fifths, and you do that, it's good to know them, like I showed you with the chords, the arpeggios, all the way up uh, chromatically. So we'll show you a little of that. And that would be C, would be your next one. So if you were on a marimba, you'd keep going up, all right? Uh, that's what I do. I start really low on a marimba, and I just play them all the way up to keyboard, which is good because the notes are graduated. So that's how I practice that. That would be the next logical step. Another way that's really difficult is to go up one scale and come down another. So I'll uh, explain this slowly. So I go up C come down C sharp, go up D, come down E flat, go up E, come down F, go up F sharp, come down G, go up A flat, come down A, and so forth, okay? So that's how you want to do that. You go up one scale and you come down the scale that's a half step above it. That's a really good way to practice. So you can do all kinds of exercises with scales. One of the most famous ones is using the one, two, three, one, like this. And then you do that in all keys. 
all right? That's tricky. You do it, all keys, it's so important to do any exercise. You can also do octaves. All right? And another one that you could do is thirds going up. I'll put all these on the screen as I've been doing for you so you can see. Uh, good books to use are Buster Bailey's books. Uh, the Mallet Calisthenics book is great. I learned a lot. I studied that. Uh, any George Hamilton Green Xolophone study books are fantastic. They show you a lot of ways to work on scales. And I'll list some other books in the description. Okay, so that's how I practice my scales, my major scales. And I do the same thing with minor. Now, to get a minor scale, once you know your major scales, you actually know all your natural minor scales. So, in other words, C major is the same as A minor. All you do is go down a minor third from that major scale. So, if I want to play D minor, I go up a minor third, and that's F. So, I play F major starting on D. And that's our minor scale. So keeping in mind that our natural minor is the same as our major scales, but just a minor third below, we can start to try to figure some of these out. There's also harmonic and melodic minor. So let's take C, as we've been doing, as our starting point. So C minor is the relative minor of E flat major. So if you remember, E flat major was this. So if we go down a minor third from E flat, that's C. So we play E flat major starting on C. Now, there's another kind of minor scale called a harmonic minor. And in that scale, we raise the seventh. So doing that, we know the seventh is B flat. So now we're going to play a B natural instead of a B flat. So I'll play it slow so you can, you can see it. So you see there how I've raised that seventh step. And that's the same with all harmonic minor scales. And that's a very common type of minor. Uh, it's almost as common as natural, you know, because so many composers use that form of minor. So you need to really know that. Another form of minor, which is a little more rare, but still used quite a bit, is melodic minor. Now this is different because melodic minor goes up one way, but comes down another. <laughs> so in melodic minor, you take your natural minor and you raise your sixth and seventh degrees of the scale. But coming down, it's natural. So in a way, it's kind of a half minor, half major scale. So that on C would look like this. So you see, I went up melodic. I raised that sixth and seventh step would be the A flat, and the B flat became A natural and B natural going up, but going down, it was natural again. It was normal. So you need to know that scale as well. So I know it's a lot, lots and lots of scales, but if you do it over a long period of time, you'll get it. I mean, I did it and it took a long time. And I still practice these all the time to keep them fresh in my head because there's so many, and some are really, really tricky. Uh, so you just need to go over those. And there's some good scale books that you can get as well. Uh, there's so many of them. I'll list some in the description because I can't put the covers up here for you. But I'll list some scale books so you can have a book that you can look at. But really the best thing to do is to either write them out yourself because then you're doing the work and you're actually seeing them and you're writing them out. So that you know goes right to the noggin here. And then obviously just play them over and over again until you can really grasp 
that whole idea of all of the minors. So that'll do it for this video. So uh, just to reiterate what we went over, we went over key signatures, number one, which is obviously closely related to our scales. So the first thing you want to do is learn your major scales, all of them. And I showed you some exercises for doing those. And you should apply those same exercises for your minor scales, which I showed you as well. The next video will be on the modes. All right. And the modes are important. And obviously major and minor, the Ionian and the Aeolian are two modes that we just covered today. The rest of them, though, uh, you need to know if you're going to play jazz. And then we'll also go over uh, diminished scales and uh, blue scales. So we'll see you next time. Thanks.